Okay, so um, today I want to dedicate my talk in memory of um, a teacher who very sadly passed away last week, um, Chris Allen, who's better known as Infernal Depart, um, is a huge inspiration for me and for reforming um, ICT education in this country. So um, this is really about um, me being a teacher and my journey with Raspberry Pi over the last year. My name's Carrie Ann Philbin. I'm a secondary school um, ICT teacher, although I suppose I'm a computing teacher now. I'm responsible for Key Stage 3 at my school, and um, I also last year became a Google certified teacher. So I started a project through my action plan for that to um, encourage more girls to take up computing. So this is my journey. Um, it started about this time last year when there was all this news about this device that had just come out that everyone should buy. So I, of course, immediately um, bought one. Of course, anyone who tried to buy one this time last year will know I now need to fast forward two months when I actually received it because, of course, um, they were sold out so quickly. So I got it, I packed it, I plugged it in, I got it started, and I've used Linux before. It wasn't anything particularly new to me. But then I thought, right, now what do I do with it? I'm not quite sure. So I decided to check on the internet and go on Twitter, like I always do. And then I found out that there was some really great stuff was happening, that communities were coming together to talk about what they were doing with their um, Raspberry Pis, and they were called Raspberry Jams. So I thought, well, I'm going to pop along to the next Raspberry Jam, and I took a teacher friend with me to see what kind of projects people were coming up with. And one of the great things about Raspberry Jams is there's always a section where people set up their wares and they show you what they've done. So I thought maybe I could go along, I could see a project and I could turn it into a scheme of work I could take into school. Um, my Raspberry Jam experience was a little bit odd and I'll get to that in a minute. But after that, um, I ended up being invited to PyCon, um, which I was really, really nervous about because anyone who doesn't know, it's a conference for Python. I'm not a programmer, I'm not a Python programmer, I'm a teacher. So I was a bit nervous about going and speaking to a room full of, um, of geeks. Am I allowed to use that word, Nick? Yeah, okay. Um, and when I was there, something fantastic happened. I met Alex Bradbury from the Raspberry Pi Foundation, and um, he's giving a talk today about managing pies in school, and I really recommend you go along and listen to that. And I also met Nick Tolovey, who's here. Tolovey, is that right? I'm always getting your names wrong. Um, who introduced me to programming and got me thinking about how we could get kids coding because it's not as simple, and, and teachers as well, because it's not as simple as saying, sign up for this Python 101 course, you know, because that's not going to help you teach children how to program. So from there, after meeting Alex, um, I then started to work with the foundation to get Raspberry Pis into my school, and, if, and I've developed a scheme of work with a guy called Sam Aaron called Sonic Pi, and I'll set that up um, later on today so you can have a go. And, you know, I always talk about engaging girls. It's very important to me. So my, far first raspberry my first Raspberry Jam experience was in London. When I got there, I met Alan. And as he said, you know, he asked me about Raspberry Pi. And I said, oh, mine's in my bag, my handbag. And I got it out with my lipstick and everything else. Um, and he asked me to stand up and speak to um, the room at the time. And I wasn't on until after everybody else. So people were talking and they were demonstrating all these fantastic projects. So one was about um, putting a Raspberry Pi in a big track. One was about... Um, turning it into a Super Nintendo called the Super Pretendo. These were all really great projects, but they were all, first of all, retro, and they were really, really geeky. And I kept thinking, well, this is great, well done, pat on the back, here's a gold star, what you've done is fantastic, but you've not thought about the whole point of this, which is about educating young people. How are we going to get these into schools? What's a project that's going to engage a young person? And, and how are we going to get girls involved? So I made this point, I actually, there's a video, and I freezed it at this point where I said, uh, we're not going to get girls engaged, and someone actually heckled me and said, well, maybe you can get it to do shopping. So this is the kind of thing we're still facing as a woman in IT, as a, a female ICT teacher, that it's okay to be heckled and, you know, say stuff like that. So it was a bit of an odd experience. So after being heckled, I kind of walked off, head down, really upset that this had happened, and I thought, this is the wrong community. Perhaps this isn't the right way to go. And then something fantastic happened. People from around the room just walked up to me and said, I disagree with that, what, what that guy just said. Um, I've got an idea for a project. Why don't you do this? Have you thought about this? And before I knew it, I had like 12 people in the room talking to me about ways I could get Pi into school. And actually, the Raspberry Pi community is one of the best communities 
um, for a teacher who's not a, a programmer by trade. Um, it's just been a fantastic experience. So why do we need to get girls um, programming? So I asked my um, students, I asked some girls, you know, what does a computer scientist look like? What kind of skills do they need to have? You know, what they like. So if we look at the board, you can see some answers up there. They think that they'd be alone. A lot of those post-it notes say math, so you need to be good at math. Uh, one says Einstein, one says that you earn a lot of money. My favourite one up there is the one right at the bottom that says you must have 57 cats. <laughs> not 56, 50, I'm, I'm not quite sure what that's about. Um, so I decided to start a project to engage girls in computer science and STEM subjects generally. So I started a YouTube channel where I make videos for um, a kind of teenage audience. Some of them are video logs, some of them are um, kind of how to do stuff style videos, which is where the little box of geek come from. You know, I've, I've made something and then I've given a tutorial step by step on how someone would go about doing it and someone being, you know, teenagers. Um, there's some interviews with women in technology. This is really important because there's not enough role models for young people generally, and especially um, women. And there's some panel discussions I have with some graduate girls from computer science as well. Uh, so here's some kind of freeze frames that I've taken from some of those videos. Um, the most famous one is me in a rather... Yeah, we'll get to that one later. <laughs> uh, so there's some of the examples. You can go along and just have a look. Geek Girl Diaries on YouTube and you'll find it. Um, this is probably... I mean, this is just a preview, but this is probably one of the most popular videos on there. Um, it's about, I mean, this is just a preview of what it does, but I actually made a tutorial on, on, on this. So basically what you do is you just press the button and it prints out a kind of geeky quote. So you can just keep hitting it and it'll keep printing. So it's a two-part video tutorial. Um, it's been really successful, which has been really cool. That's another one. Yeah, that's my theme tune. I'll skip that. I can see. Right, so um, Sonic Pi. So um, after kind of success of um, Geek Girl Diaries and some of the projects I've been doing that, and having met Alex Bradbury, um, I was introduced um, to the foundation, to Rob Mullins, and then I was introduced to one of their PhD um, graduates called Sam Aaron. And what he does is he, um, use it, he makes music by programming, which is fantastic anyway. And he had turned the Raspberry Pi into a kind of synthesizer. And he came into school to meet me and he said, you know, do you think we could teach programming concepts with this idea of using music? And I said, yes, I think that's amazing. So together we sat down and we created a scheme of work that I've been teaching to my year eight students. So you can see up there, um, there's some pictures of some of the students having a go. It's a six week scheme of work. It covers, covers the principles of programming. And what's really great about it is it's instant. So um, a student will write a piece of code and it will instantly you know, give them feedback because they can hear the music playing. And it's engaged both the girls and the boys, which has been fantastic. I've been really lucky <coughs> that the foundation did pay for my equipment, but it's been a real low budget kind of endeavor. Um, once you've got your pies, I mean, I've got one between two, so I have, they haven't got one each, they're in pairs. Um, you only need uh, headphones that I get the kids to bring in. Um, I didn't have enough monitors because I needed DVI monitors and of course all the monitors are school VGA, right? So um, I spoke to the community and some guy in Chelmsford just said, I've got six monitors, do you want them? I went, yep, went and picked them up. He even gave me a pie for my trouble. You know, the community is just a fantastic place. So um, benefits of this approach is so far that it's in engaged all my students, even the girls. I've got um, a bottom set and a top set I've been trialling it with because of course the top set are going to get it. But the bottom set, um, I wasn't quite sure how they would react. And I've got some girls in there who just switched off generally by education. And whatever I do, and I am very creative with what I do in computing, sometimes you don't get them all. And there was a girl in there who's very, very weak. And we started doing this. And she was really into it, and she was really enjoying it. And a member of SLT walked in, and she was able to explain to him all the principles of programming that she had learned. It completely matched the lesson objectives. Um, she was enthused. She was engaged, she wanted to tell him about it. You know, it was like the clouds had parted, there was a ray of sunshine, there were angels singing, it was like the perfect Ofsted moment. Why were Ofsted not there at that exact moment? <laughs> don't know. Um, but this will hopefully um, give you an idea of what it's like. I've just sort of filmed it running. So um, Cambridge were really good. They developed the environment in which they program. Um, it's using Ruby because Ruby's got quite nice words. You can have like play a note and sleep. They kind of mean something to kids. And it, I'm not sure if you can hear the kind of beat. Right, 
so we're going to get some whoop whoop noises, we're going to get some dubstep going. This is really engaging for the students. I'm really hoping we can do something um, cross-curricular with this at some point. That would be really cool as well. Um, so we're kind of halfway through the scheme of work at the moment and um, as soon as it's finished and we're happy with it, we will um, put it up for the world to see. It's completely creative commons, we want people to use it and put it into schools. I think that's really important, what we do, the software that we create, the schemes of work, resources, um, there'll be videos, everything that you'll need will be there for teachers to access and use. Thanks. Okay, so like I said, the community is really, really good. Fantastic community of people. Um, Raspberry Pi for beginners videos. If you're not sure how to do anything for Raspberry Pi, go to that YouTube channel. Obviously, go to my YouTube channel first, but then go to that YouTube channel because that's where I've learned pretty much everything. And Matt is just a fantastic guy. We've even collaborated on videos together. Um, the Magpie, which someone's already spoken about. Computing at school. There's a subgroup of computing at school called Hash Include, which I'm vice chair of to get minorities into computing. We're running, well, we've got a launch party in April in London, and we've got a hack day, um, workshop day planned for the 15th of June in um, Warwickshire. So that's going to be um, quite cool. Yeah, so that's me. Thank you for listening. Sorry I didn't get it right the first time.